Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name because today you are giving us a kind of triumph, a kind of victory that will make us conquer in a permanent way in Jesus' name. Your word in us, your word in our hearts, in our spirit, in our soul, in our mind, coming out from our mouth will give us victory over every situation in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, at this time, the power of the word, the power of the spirit, and the power in the name of Jesus will avail for everyone. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious people of God said, we're coming to Romans chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. The apostle had been talking about the love of God. And what keeps us in that love of God? Look at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then as he continues, he brings us in. And he says, whatever happens in that love of Christ, whatever happens at the very center of that love of Christ, we and more than conquerors. And then he comes to the final verse of that chapter, verse 39. No height, no depth, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. It begins that section, that bracket, of the love of Christ. And he closes that bracket with the love of God. And at the very center of that passage, it says, we are more than conquerors as we are surrounded and supported by the love of Christ, the love of God. Read everything now. Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are all killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Is talking about the persecution that the early church experienced. And they were driven from city to city. And they were moved from place to place. And they were searching for them as if they were searching for or hunting for animals. But then Paul the apostle said, in spite of it all, despite everything, that you can think about coming against any member of the church, coming against any local church, coming against the body of Christ. It says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded. That's what Paul said. That's what I say. And what do you say? For I am persuaded. And he have the voice of the old house. I said, what did you say? For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, 
nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. As we live our Christian lives, we need to be reminded there will be times of trial. There will be times of persecution. There will be times of temptation. There will be times to find yourself at a crossroad. Where do I turn to? Where do I go? To the right or to the left? Or do I go on in a straight course? At such a crossroad, in times when you are perplexed, in times when there may be confusion, the Lord wants you to remember that with his love upon your life and his love within your heart, whatever happens, whoever is against you, whatever the temptation, whoever the tempter or the temptress may be, you'll be more than a conqueror. Because he gives us triumph at the cross. He bought that triumph for us. With his word, he has given us the promise of that triumph. And by his spirit, he transfers that victory, that overcoming spirit, that triumph, transfers that to every heart. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. As we look at that verse, it talks about triumph and it says we're giving thanks to god it's not in our strength it's not in our power the weakest of the saints of god the smallest of the children of god can have triumph because it says the source the secret of that triumph is god himself and he gives that triumph, and he gives the victory, and he gives that overcoming power to all his children, all the heirs of the kingdom. And so he could say, now, at this time, when he said now, he was looking at all the things that had happened since he became a Christian, since he became a child of God, and since he became an heir of the kingdom and then he's looking at all the Corinthian believers he's looking at what they had passed through in their community in their country and with the alien nations around them and now he said in it all and through it all thanks be unto God which always not sometimes whatever the challenge always Whatever the confrontation, always, whatever the power that may wage war against your life, we are conquerors always. I may conquer always. I said, I am a conqueror always. It says, always causes us to triumph, always makes us to triumph. He gives the power, He gives the enablement, He gives the strength. And it makes us to triumph every time in Christ. Salvation, we have that in Christ. Sanctification, we have that in Christ. Peace and purity, we have that in Christ. And Holy Ghost power, we have that in Christ. And the courage and the backbone to stand, we have that in Christ. And it says once we remain in Christ, it causes us to triumph. In Christ, and He maketh manifest the savor of His knowledge 
By us? In how many places? I said in how many places? In every place, every place you find yourself. The rest of this year and the rest of your Christian life, you will triumph in Jesus' name. Look at First John chapter 4. Receive for that triumph. And the reason for that power. And the reason for overcoming. First John chapter 4 verse 4. Ye of God, little children. Are you born again? Ye of God, little children. Have you moved on in consecration and sanctification? Ye of God, little children. And after being saved, sanctified, purified, crucified with Christ, risen with Christ, and you are purified and sanctified and made holy, and you have moved on into the possession of the power of the Holy Ghost. And he says, because of that year of God, little children and have overcome them. We are overcomers. I am an overcomer. I said I am an overcomer. Temptation, I overcome. Trial, I overcome. Persecution, I overcome. At the crossroads, I overcome. Powers of darkness, I overcome. Sickness, I can't hear the church. Sickness, disaster, accident, you overcome in Jesus' name. You yeah, have got little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We need to understand who we have. And what we have, we have Christ living within, abiding within. You're saved, that salvation is greater than all the sins, all the temptations in the world. You're sanctified, that power of purity living within, that has taken away the Adamic nature, that thing you have inside you. With the fulfillment of the promises of God, it's greater than anything in the world. You have the Holy Ghost abiding in you. It says, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, He is with you and shall be in you. That one inside you is greater than anything that will come against your life in the world. Know what you have. Know who you have and know what you possess and understand because he that abides in you, Jesus Christ abides in the believer. I stand at the door and knock and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in unto him. Christ lives in you. The Father abides within you. He that has my word and he shows love to me and obeys my word, the Father will love him and I and my Father will enter into him. You have Christ within. You have the Father within. And now you have the Holy Ghost within. Read that verse again, ye of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The triune God abides within us. You cannot be defeated. You cannot be conquered. You're going to overcome. You're going to have triumph in jesus name kingdom triumph three things we're looking at number one the testimony and the pattern of the king's triumph christ 
is the king christ is our lord christ is our master and he has triumphed already i want to see the testimony and the pattern of the king's triumph number two our trust in his promise of kingdom triumph is giving us promises and by these promises we remain conquerors we remain overcomers and we're triumphant our trust in his promise of kingdom triumph number three his transfer of power he has the power in fact he has all power on earth and in heaven and he transfers that power he transmits that power unto every heir of the kingdom his transfer of power for kingdom triumph number one tell me your number one there shout out number one over there the testimony and pattern of the king's triumph how did he triumph how did he overcome how did he have the power over everything that came against him many passages we could refer to but let's look at matthew chapter 4 the testimony and the pattern of the king's triumph matthew chapter 4 verse 1 then was jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil tried of the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was up to watch and hungered he was hungry and when the tempter came to him he said if thou be the son of god think about that in the previous chapter that's in chapter 3 when he was baptized in water as he was coming out the holy ghost in the form of a dove lighted upon him and then the voice of the father spoke from heaven in chapter 3 verse 17 and lo a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and immediately after following in the tempter is going to challenge that statement from heaven here we are heirs of the kingdom here we are citizens of the kingdom here we are having the face of the kingdom here we are having the authority the authority of the king of kings and the lord of lords kingdom authority here we are dedicated to kingdom service here we are going on and moving on and everywhere we go everything we touch we move on with kingdom love here we are and we are possessors of the treasures of the kingdom and satan is going to challenge that is going to bring temptation trial is going to say if you are what you testify to be if you are a real child of god if you are truly sanctified if you are an heir of the kingdom then it's going to come with temptation but thank god jesus overcame and you are going to overcome somebody there i said jesus overcame and you are an overcomer look at this verse 3 if that be the son of god command that these stones be made bread look at the answer look at the victory look at the triumph look at the secret of triumph look at the source of triumph and look at the supernatural power that backed up the words of christ because it's the word of scripture verse 4 and he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone 
but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's how you overcame. That's how you are going to overcome. How did you overcome? He said, it is written. It is written. Jesus knew what was written. And what was written in particular about him. And he knew because of that, he could not fail. Search the scriptures. Look at the word of God. Look at the promises of God for the believer. And know the promise that is written concerning you. And when temptation comes, when trial comes, when the tempter, the temptress may come to you, you're going to quote that word and say, it is written. Look at the next one, verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is reaching. Uh -huh. There are times the devil will also appeal to the Bible. Because Jesus had said, it is reaching, and he overcame him, triumphed over him, overpowered him, overthrew him. He now went to the scripture to search for something, and to make the scripture a source of temptation. You know, Satan will do that. He use somebody and the little scripture they know, they want to quote that and make that a source of temptation, a source of trial. Look at what he said in verse 6. And he says, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands that they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone and Jesus said unto him don't go anywhere to look for victory your victory is in the word of God your triumph is in the word of God your power is in the word of God but seven Jesus said unto him it is reaching again. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And now in verse 8, the devil came the first round. Jesus overcame. I will overcome. He came from the second angle. And Jesus overcame. I will overcome. He didn't stop there. Look at verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and says unto him, look at this, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me, he said, the kingdoms of the world, they are in my hand. The power, the glory, they belong to me. Adam transferred them to me. And I know what you're looking for. They call you Lord. They call you Master. They call you King. I'll hand it over to you on one condition. You fall down, you bend down, you worship me, everything will be yours. That's how Satan tries to capture people. That's how Satan tries to bring people under his rule. Money, I can give you. Women, I can give you. Popularity, I can give you. Promotion, I can give you. Name it, whatever. Fall down and worship me. Do the ritual. Go through the ceremony. Get into the initiation. And I will give you everything. That's what he presented to Christ. Christ will not fall down before Satan. I will not worship him. I will not fall down before Satan. You say it for yourself. You let Satan hear. 
I will not worship Satan. Look at this in verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. The third time again, you overcame the devil because it is written. It says, For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him. When Satan comes through this angle, he cannot get you. He comes through another angle, he will not get you. I thought you'll say amen there. Yeah. And he comes through another angle, and he will not get you. Yeah. Satan will say, this one will not bend. This one will not yield. This one will not sin. This one will not compromise. This one will not fall. Bye-bye, Satan says bye-bye to you. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Do you know why Jesus overcame? Number one, he knew what was reaching. Number two, he knew what he possessed. Know those two things. Number one, what is reaching. You know, Jesus Christ always referred to that. Reaching. Reach him. Look at Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. We're looking at verse 44. It says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things, how many things? I said, How many things? Church, let me hear your voice. How many things? He said, I told you, when I was here to you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written. Look at that. All things written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms, concerning me. He knew all that had been written concerning him. Go to Genesis chapter 3, reaching concerning me. And go to Exodus, reaching concerning me. And he went through, and he always meditated on that in his heart. And when the devil came, it took him no time at all to just bring it out and said, It is reaching. And on the basis of what is reaching, he overcame. On the basis of what is reaching concerning you, you will overcome. Look at Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 17. Luke chapter 4 verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of Isaiah the prophet. And when he had opened the book, look at this, look at this. He found the place where it was written. You see, as you read the Bible, and you know that you're a believer. And you put your name, if you're a believer, put your name every time you find the believer. Who either believes, or the beloved, or the saint of God, or the heirs of the kingdom. And notice what is written concerning the believer. Notice what is written concerning the beloved. Notice what is written concerning the saint of God. Notice what is written concerning an heir of the kingdom. Jesus knew what was written concerning him. And we're told he found the place where it was written. Verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And to bring deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised he knew that all that was written concerning him and he acted according to what was written concerning him and he spoke according to what was written concerning him and he resisted temptation according to what was written concerning him 
Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 7. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, it says, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is reaching of me to do thy will, O God. And because he knew, he came to do the will of God. And that was reaching concerning him. He found each in the volume of the book. And it was reaching concerning him. Therefore, he was always overcoming. And if you'll always remember, always meditate, always read in the Bible, always believe, always think about, always apply, always turn on the word that is reaching concerning you. Thank God you'll have a testimony. Thank God the power of God will walk in your life in Jesus' name. Look at another side of the victory of Christ. The victory of Christ was based on the knowledge of what he knew he possessed. If you're a believer and you're not looking at what is written concerning the believer and you're not thinking about Look at what I have. Look at what I possess. Look at what abides in me. If you don't know what you possess, the devil will be trying to present something to you you already have. And because you don't know you have, you will fall for his trick. I'm talking to somebody that will not fall over there. I said I'm talking to somebody that will not fall. Look at Luke chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 6. Luke chapter 4. Reading from verse 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only, him only, him only shall thou serve. Now, the devil presented power and glory. And you think about Jesus. He knew himself. He knew what the Father had given him. He knew what he possessed already. And Satan was ignorant of that. And because of the ignorance of Satan, he said, Look at it. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. I'll give it to you if you'll worship me. If you are ignorant, that's how the people of the world, that's how the messengers of Satan, that's how the tempter, that's how the temptress, that's how the defiler, that's how they'll come to you and be presenting something to you that you already possess, you didn't know that you possess. Look at John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 35. John chapter 3 verse 35 The Father loveth the Son and has given all things into his hand. Jesus did not need anything from Satan. The Father had given him everything. He possessed all things already. Look at John chapter 17. And I'm reading from verse 2. John chapter 17, reading from verse 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, not that it will be given. The Father has given him already. And Satan was coming. He thought that Christ was ignorant of what he possessed. If you are ignorant of what you possess, 
they'll pick a flower from your yard, from your from the back of your house, from your own garden. They plant that flower and it's from your garden and they present it to you. And I say, Lord of flower, still there in your garden. And you're not looking at your garden. You're not looking at what you have. You're not looking at your privilege. You're not looking at the promises you have. You're not looking at the, at the property that you have. And they come to present to you what you already have. And they say, I'll give you this beautiful flower. If you will just compromise. If you will sin. If you will do evil. Get away, Satan. We have what we need. I said we have what we need. Look at verse 2. As thou wast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Matthew chapter 28. Know what you have. Jesus knew what he possessed, that's why the gift coming from Satan, the presentation of Satan, and the thing Satan was saying, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you this, did not ring any bell. I did not uh, impress him at all. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. Jesus came and spake unto them saying, somebody there tell me, Somebody there shout it out. How many forms of power? How many kinds of power? Any limitation to that power? All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Satan came too late. Christ possessed all that already. The same thing with the child of God. Know what belongs to you. And when you know what you have already, as an heir of the kingdom the devil will not come and trick you into sinning against the lord revelation chapter 11 revelation chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 15 revelation 11 verse 15 and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign how long forever and ever and Jesus knew ultimately from the end of the father all the kingdoms of the world will be handed over unto him and so Satan coming with temptation the temptation held no water didn't take root and didn't take hold on Christ. Because number one, he knew what was written. Number two, he knew what he possessed. Know who you are. I said, know who you are. Do you know who you are? I said, do you know who you are? You are an heir of the kingdom. All things are yours. All the precious promises of God are yours. Healing is yours. Deliverance is yours. Salvation is yours. Redemption is yours. Power is yours. Holiness is yours. Paradise is yours. Heaven is yours. Happiness is yours. And so Satan cannot come. There's something you don't have. There's something the Father has not given to you. There's something Christ has not made prov provided for you. I'm going to give you this. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. For the Lord has said, only God will I worship. Somebody there, only God will you worship. Point number two now. Our trust in his promise of kingdom triumph. Our trust in the promise of kingdom triumph. All we need is faith. You have faith, every mountain will move. You have faith, every sickness will be healed. You have faith, all the possessions you desire, you are going to have in Jesus' name. 
you have faith angels will surround you your life will be protected with trust in his promise of kingdom triumph Romans chapter 1 verse 17 for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith you will live by faith you will not die you will triumph by faith you will not fall you will overcome by faith you will not be defeated you'll be victorious by faith in jesus name look at um, romans chapter 4 verse 17 as it is written i have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even god who quickness the dead everything that is dead in your family in your body will have resurrection life today and call it those things would be not as though they were call it those things would be not as though they were before you see them confess them say them out i have them already and because i have them already a tempter coming come to a herbalist come to a jiu man come to make some potion some lotion and then rub on you and then people will love you they will like you they'll come your way already heaven's love is upon your life i said heaven's love is upon your life and anyone that loves the lord will love you anyone that does not love the lord what do you care about somebody is an enemy of god loving you they are children of satan let them get behind you who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according that which was spoken so shall thy seed be so shall thy possession be so shall thy blessing be and be not working faith be not waking faith. That's all we need. Faith in God. Faith in God. Faith in God. It will cancel the power of the tempter from your life in Jesus' name. He considered not a somebody now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. That's how Abraham overcame. That's how you are going to overcome the promises of God covering every area of your life. You are not staggering at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. That's how to overcome. Being fully persuaded. That's how to overcome. You are fully persuaded. That everything that is written concerning you, everything will be fulfilled. And so when a persecutor comes, and the persecutor is saying, submit and yield and give your soul to us. That we can handle your soul, handle your destiny. If you don't, we're going to persecute you to the point of death. But... You know the promise of God. Your destiny is not in the hand of Satan. I didn't have the amen I wanted. Your destiny is not in the hand of a persecutor. I will not be happy if I don't submit to them. I will not be happy if I don't surrender to them. I will not be happy if I don't yield to them. They want my soul. They want my destiny. They don't want me to be a man of decision. They don't want me to decide and say, this is where I'm going and I'm going to get there. They say, any decision I take is not going to hold except I surrender to them. I say, no, I will not surrender my soul to anyone. Somebody there, I will not surrender my destiny to anyone. 
Your destiny is in the hand of the almighty God. You will not yield to the persecutor in Jesus' name. You have the promise of God and you will not fear. You have the promise of God and you will not stagger. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised was able to perform. Therefore, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. It will be imputed to you as well in Jesus' name. We have something. I said we have something. Somebody there, I have something. And because of what we have, you are going to enjoy what you have. Nobody will hinder you from enjoying what you have. Heaven has given them to you. Calvary has given them to you. The power of the Lord has provided everything for you. And nobody will stop the enjoyment of what God has provided for you in Jesus' name. You know what they say? You better cooperate. You better cooperate. We have all the power. That's a lie. No man on earth has all the power against your life. I'm talking to somebody there today. Your life is in the hand of the Almighty God. In fact, it says, your life is hid with Christ in God. And they will not overpower you in Jesus' name. If you battle with them and you are not succeeding in your own strength, come. Come to me and come to any of our leaders. And if we agree as touching anything concerning you, it will be done in heaven in Jesus' name. Don't we know what we have? We have the power to bind and to lose. And that enemy of yours and that enemy that is running after your life and after your family, if we bind them on earth, they are bound in heaven. If we lose and release the blessing of God upon your life, you are blessed in Jesus' name. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're looking at verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, no ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that what? For them that what? That love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Thank God you possess. Thank God you overcome. Thank God, power is yours. But you know, you must voice it out. You must say it out. Because it is in the same. What if when the tempter came to Christ and he said, do this, he kept quiet. And the devil nudged him again. Do this, and he kept quiet. You will not keep quiet. That's a time to speak. And that time to speak, the power of God will energize you and stir you up. The right word, like a stone out of the sling of David, will come out of your sling. You will defeat that Goliath. And every mountain will move from your sight in Jesus' name. But you must speak. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as, tell me, according as, tell me, I said according as, tell me, it is written. That's what you must confess. That's what you must bring out. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written. I believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. I also believe, 
I also believe. Let the heavens hear you. I also believe. Let the tempters hear you. I also believe. Let the temptress hear you. I also believe. Let your persecutors hear. I also believe, therefore, speak, and the word you speak will be performed in Jesus' name. The word of your mouth will not fall to the ground. The Lord will uphold that word in Jesus' name. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 13. Write unto your fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. Write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. Any young man there? Any believer there? The Lord has seen you there. It says, I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I'm reaching unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have reaching unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I'm reaching unto you, young men, because ye are, because ye are, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. As we are going out, understand? You are going as an overcomer. You are going as a triumphant heir. And you are going as a mighty conqueror in Jesus' name. You will overcome. I will overcome. We shall overcome. The power of God will not fail in our lives in Jesus' name. Point number three now is transfer of power for kingdom triumph. It's transfer of power for kingdom triumph. Has somebody ever transferred money it's your bank account before. If they have not, they will do it now. Yeah. And heaven from the bank of heaven, God is going to transfer something into your life. Yeah. You were weak before, weakness will vanish away. Yeah. And then me, because if you have no strength, you have no blood. All that anemia, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. You are in your thirties, they have cowered you so much. You are bending down, you cannot look up. It's like the enemy, like a lion, is going to pounce on you. You will straighten up. You will square your shoulders. Because heaven is going to transfer power into your life today in Jesus name Isaiah chapter 40 Isaiah chapter 40 you feel the power already don't you feel the power in your heart don't you feel the power in your brain don't you feel the power in your blood in your bloodstream don't you feel the power it's coming, it's coming. Power is being transferred into your life. You will never fall anymore in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29, verse 29, are you there? Are you there? He giveth power to the faith. He giveth power. He giveth power. Somebody shout, he giveth power. He giveth power to the faith. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Somebody there, I say you are strong. 
Somebody there say, I am strong. All the weakness in prayer, everything is gone. All the weakness of the past, everything is gone. Now there is power. Somebody there said there is power. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But, I said but. Somebody help me shout but. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings like the eagle. You will fly over every mountain. You will fly over every river. Every uncrossable gulf, you'll fly over them in Jesus' name. Because they will mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall run and not be weary. They shall run and not be weary. That is the race that is set before you. This race that is set before you, you will not come last, you will come first. And as you are running this race, remember all the weakness of the past, all the failure of the past, everything is consoled. Now you will run and you will not be weary. And you will walk and you will not fade. But looking at Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, somebody there, you have something right now. I said you have something right now. You are going out as a possessor. You are going out as a partaker. And you are going out as a conqueror. Give me a church. Amen. Look at this, look at this, look at this. It's in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10. Look at this. I'm looking at it. Have you seen it? I said, have you seen it? You know, sometimes when somebody wants to give you something and this is something beyond your comprehension. And then there's a way you see it and it appears that, uh, you know, the thing will not enter properly. But when you want it to enter, you want it to penetrate, you stand up, you say, I'm ready, give it to me. I said, you stand up and you say, I'm ready, give it to me. Somebody, anybody ready there? Anybody ready for the transfer of power? For the transfer of strength, for the transfer of his spirit. It says, it says, behold, I give unto you power. I'm getting something right now. I'm receiving something right now. Behold, I give unto you power from the throne of glory. God is saying unto you, I give unto you power. And from the majesty and glory on high, it says, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Don't let anything walk over you anymore. And don't let any serpent, any scorpion walk over you anymore. You will tread on serpents. You will tread on scorpions and over all the power 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 of the enemy you have conquered every enemy somebody there I have conquered every enemy I have conquered every enemy and nothing shall by any means sort you receive that power right now receive that power right now receive that triumph right now receive that authority right now say Lord I receive Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. He has given you power. The transfer of power. His transfer of power. For kingdom triumph. Transfer of power. For kingdom triumph. You will triumph. You will overcome. The devil will not overcome you. The tempter will not overcome you. The persecutor will not overcome you. And whatever condition surrounds you, that condition will not overcome you. You have all power. You have all power. You have all power. You have all power and it is yours. You have all power and it is yours. You have all power and it is yours. Don't cringe anymore. Don't crawl anymore. Don't be coward anymore. Don't be a coward. Stand up and straighten yourself up and square your shoulders and look the enemy in the face and look the persecutor in the face and say, I have overcome. 
I have overcome. I have overcome. I have overcome. The power is there. The promises are there. You cannot fail. You will not fall. Receive that power. All the promises of God are yes and amen upon your life. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. I possess. I possess. What you confess, you possess. What you confess, you possess. What you confess, you possess. I believe, therefore I speak. I believe, therefore I speak. Victory in your soul. Victory in your spirit. Victory in your business. Victory in your Christian life. Victory in your family. Victory for your children. Victory for the church. Victory for the heirs of the kingdom. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> victorious people of God, victorious heirs of the kingdom, in Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> you are victorious already. You are triumphant already. You are an overcomer already. You are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand for victory. Raise up that hand in victory. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you because Christ has overcome. And because he overcame, we too, we have overcome in Jesus' name. He overcame temptation, we overcome temptation. He overcame the tempter, we overcome the tempter. You overcame in every challenge of life. We overcome in every challenge of life. I pray, Lord, this faith and this confidence will abide permanent in every child of God in Jesus' name. As you go, you are at a crossroad. You have a challenge. Persecutors ray up the ugly head. Or temptation may rise up. Go in the strength of the Lord. Be an overcomer in Jesus' name. When sickness comes, you have overcome already. Sickness will not cut short your life. Disease will not cut short your life. Satan will not cut your life short. Evil spirit, evil power will not cut your life short. You are protected in Jesus' name. The power to overcome every enemy. The power to overcome every challenge. The power to overcome every temptation. Every trial. Every sickness. Every infirmity. Every evil spirit. Receive in Jesus' name. As you go, the power of God will go with you. The presence of God will go with you. The anointing that breaks every yoke will go with you. You are no more like you were before. Now there is power inside you. You run the race, you will not be weary. You walk in the way of the Lord, you will not be tired. And I pray that you'll come back next time with testimonies resounding in your mouth. In Jesus' name. Victory for everyone triumph for everyone power for everyone and lord i pray that everyone will have the testimony he has made me a conqueror he has made you a conqueror he has made you an overcomer 
Confirm it, Lord, in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.